Tonight, we're going to a dangerous area of an Amazon account so we can understand the relationship between humans and PPC campaigns. Crikey, take a look at this. We're face to face with a hard hitting predator. And oh boy, this keyword means business. Its toxic venom can lead to hundreds of clicks without conversion. One boy, and it could leave you paralyzed with high ACAS for weeks. Now, these predators won't be mocking with us. We've got the biggest predator on our side, the Ad Badger. Oi, easy boy. And we're here to help you tame these beasts in the jungles of Amazon PPC. What's going on, Badger Nation? It's Mike and Steven, and you're listening to the PPC Den Podcast, the world's first Amazon advertising podcast, and your source for all the tips, tricks, and optimization strategies you need to grow your Amazon ads. And you can join thousands of listeners and get bonus content at adbadger.com slash podcasts. Well, there you go. There you have it, Steven. We've done it. We've got a new podcast intro. That was a long intro, and we, I think we kept that on for a long time, too. I think that was about six months or something. Yep. We had that, so I loved it. Tune, yes, me too. It makes me want to play the didgeridoo. Uh, be sure to tune in six months from now, because we'll probably record a new one every so often. Got to so, get fresh. I wonder how many podcast listeners out there don't listen for the Amazon content. Instead, they only listen to see what we're going to do with the intro. Probably, that's it. Yes, we've got a new intro and a new outro today. Big deal. Um, Big yeah, deal. We did. Uh, we got this one uh, uh, review on iTunes. Uh, just five l- just stars. Last Sunday. Last yeah. Sunday too. Last Sunday, so super new. Uh, the review said, "Great stuff." Once you get past the three minutes intro, <laughs> Oof, I've hit, ouch! I've hit pause and gone straight to my AMS account multiple times. Uh, that's awesome. It's exactly what we're trying to do. Give you guys. Yes. Uh, actionable insights that you can just run uh, straight over to your computer and get optimizing. The username on that uh, review, Terptastic. Love it. Thanks, Terptastic. <laughs> well, hey, Terptastic, we hope you appreciate this new intro. Yes. 60 I seconds. Hear, I need to hear from Terptastic. I need to know if they appreciate our new shorter intro. I, I think this is important to uh, let the listeners know, Mike, how much, uh, how much we put into our intros Mm -hmm. this last intro we watched i mean i we we watched an hour of steve Irwin, um you know crocodile hunter we practiced accent lessons we we took accent lessons on youtube i'm sure accents are abysmal i'm sorry we really tried hard we think australian is a very hard accent to do um we spent three hours recording those 60 seconds like recording re-recording uh it was we're trying, to make, we're trying to have fun with it. I mean, we, we are having fun with it. For sure. Uh, so thank you, everyone. I know it's become a bit of an uh, inside joke on our show, uh, what we do with our intros, and it's really awesome to have everyone uh, contribute to that conversation. We really do love what we do over here on the show, and we love that you are listening sincerely, and we're stoked to keep on doing it for you. So thanks, everyone, for your support. Got a new intro. It's a big, big deal. And... Recording the intro caused me, it's now six o'clock on a Friday before a three-day weekend. That's how important we valued the podcast intro. We're just like, got to muscle through, got to get it done. And now Our we're actually, into, now we're actually getting to the episode. <laughs> now let's like, oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. We replaced that long intro with just us talking about a long intro. Uh, Steven, let's jump into the meat of this episode, which is targeting options in Amazon DSP. And this is really exciting. And in case you're sitting there wondering, wondering like what the heck is Amazon DSP, let's jump into a super quick who, what, when, where, why for Amazon DSP. All righty, Mike, let's fire through these who, where, what, let's when, why. Uh, number, number one, who, who uses the DSP? Typically, it's going to be larger advertisers, you know, companies that are ready to spend $50,000 a month on uh, their monthly advertising spend. However, there are ways to access the powerful Amazon DSP network if you go through a company like AdBadger. We'll talk more about that in a future episode. All right. And uh, what is uh, what is the DSP? I consider Amazon DSP to be sort of like a super powered Google Display network. So similar to Google Display network where you can target based off retargeting um, or audiences or 
genders and age ranges, you have access to similar data, but it's super powered by Amazon, like you can target by uh, products they looked at. And when did the like did this come into being? Like when when did DSP start? Yeah, it's been around for a couple of years now. It's not not new, but they're definitely putting it more into prominence, and it's uh, really exciting. It continues to grow and get smarter. And where can DSP ads appear? These ads can appear, you know, similar to how Google Display has their own network. You know, Google goes out and says, "Will you join our Google Display network?" website and then google ads can appear on those websites amazon has done the same thing they've built a display network of their own and sometimes websites can rent out space both to google and amazon uh, it's pretty cool amazon's dsp uh includes amazon.com which is pretty neat and final question why would someone want to use the amazon dsp if you are trying to sort of like double the reach of your amazon advertising like overnight and you've got a product and you know exactly who buys it, or you want to do retargeting, really powerful retargeting, DSP is really the only way to go to do it if you're an Amazon advertiser. Boom. Yeah, one thing uh, One thing that I do want to uh, comment on this is DSP is very similar to sponsored display. Um, I think in summary, and this you'll see in the rest of this episode, um, sponsored display are auto automatic targeting campaigns. They do display on Amazon and off Amazon, as does the DSP on Amazon and off Amazon. DSP is basically like a manual targeting campaign. Um, so in sponsor display, and the other thing to keep in mind about display ads is that where PPC is targeting keywords, display is targeting audiences. Um, so sponsor display within Seller Central or, or Ad Console, uh, you don't have any control over the creative. Uh, you don't have any control over the audience. It's pretty much an auto campaign. On the DSP, you can have custom creatives, custom ads, um, and manually choose your audiences. Yes, and perfect segue. Let's actually start getting into the targeting there. So by targeting, really simple, you know, there's so many weird vernacular terms in the world of PPC, Amazon advertising, and the greater digital marketing landscape. In PPC, in paid advertising world, what we're referring to targeting, that just means what's going to trigger your ad to display. Uh, that's basically it. You know, what's going to trigger your ads? And, and generally, you have an ad and you have a trigger. When somebody's doing something on the internet that triggers your ad, that's the targeting. So targeting is what triggers your ads. And, you know, we all know about keyword targeting. Somebody searches a keyword, boom, your ad is appearing. Category targeting, that's in, you know, sponsored products, brand targeting, and DSP, get ready to put your safety equipment on because it's about to get way more superpower. We're going to be going instead of, you know, 20 miles an hour, we're going to be going 100 miles an hour. So the amount of things that we're going to cover here, it's going to be quick, rapid fire. Uh, there's a lot to cover. So that being said, the targeting will really impress you in terms of what's available. Steven, I know that you personally we're just super stoked to do this episode because this is super because you can get so creative with all the different things here. Yeah, so um, we are now a DSP company as of 2020. Uh, in 2019, uh, we were not, but now we've been uh, we've getting involved with it. So yeah, it's been really exciting and interesting just to learn about it. And one thing that was kind of eye opening once we got onto the DSP platform is seeing just how much information Amazon really has at their disposal. Like. Um, I mean, if you think about it, they have everybody's shopping behavior and they can pretty much peg your lifestyle, your interests, um, even your demographics quite easily based on, you know, your shopping behavior. There's a lot of data partners too. Yeah. Data partners as well. Um, but they also have like, what are you watching on Amazon prime? Like, what are you, what are you streaming? You know, they, they're building demographics off of that. Um, and even also who knows how much our, uh, Alexa echo devices are listening to our conversation. Oh, she just lit up. Oh, you're listening to me now, aren't you? Little robot. Bum, bum, bum. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm kidding about that, but I mean, it's a possibility, I guess, that they could be, uh, you know, collecting our conversations and tagging us that way. But um, the way these different targeting segments work, um, I'll run through the list really quickly and then we'll kind of break them all down. Um, so these are the targeting segments. 
there is in market, basically your shopping behavior. There is lifestyle, there is automotive, there is demographics, devices, browsers, operating system, and education. So we're about to break those down for you. So in market, these are going to be people that have performed and are in, a, they, they perform certain actions to put themselves in a particular market. Uh, they've been doing things on the internet and Amazon knows what their interests are. Uh, and, you know, in market means, you know, are you a gamer? Are you interested in games? Are you interested in children's toys? Are you interested in beauty and cosmetics? So on and so forth. So these are in market. I am in the market to do those things. And Amazon has picked up signals to indicate that I am of that type of, you know, if I'm a vegan grocery shopper, that information is a known thing that we as advertisers can go out there and utilize. Yeah, it can get pretty granular with these like in market um, items. Um, so yeah, I mean, you'll, you'll, as you really dive into this and start seeing all the targeting options, it gets really, um, intense. So, I mean, you can actually see that in the, the next audience targeting segment, which is lifestyle. Um, so for lifestyle, you can see things like video game enthusiasts and, you know, that's obviously pretty easy to peg for people who are searching for video games. You know, it's pretty easy to tag those people and, or, you know, that, that cookie, that IP address, um, and, and now you have an audience there that if someone wants to target people that are looking specifically at video games with an ad, you know, it's pretty easy for them to build these audiences. There's also, uh, you can target people by favorite streaming genre. So if you kind of know your demographic would be interested in something, uh, like a specific genre, you could hit them with that, but it gets even more granular than that. There is a, just in terms of streaming, you can target people who are eighties TV comedy enthusiasts. That is one of the targeting categories. You can also target people by actors that they're interested in. So Tom Hanks fans is one of the targeting options. In fact, it can get so granular, you can say, watched a Tom Hanks movie within the past 30 days. Boom. So if you're selling like a Tom Hanks t-shirt or something, you know, it, you can really get uh, fine-tuned with this. Um, you can target truck owners. You can target World War II history fans, yoga enthusiasts. These are all examples of the different lifestyle options available within this audience targeting segment. Right. Already, you can see some of the difference between just straight up keyword targeting versus some of what we have available to us here. We are able to start serving products, ads to people before they may even know that they want it. So this happens so many times with really high powered advertisers. It's like they've captured all the search traffic and now they need to go up further and, and go up the, the funnel. Like, hey, we know that gamers love our you know, keyboard because it's great for gaming we are capturing, we're, you know, we're dominating the search page. Now we want to go beyond that and we want to start really solidifying our, our place in the market. And we actually just want to go after all gamers. And then let's keep going. Uh, you can then target automotive. Uh, you can target any make and model of a car, including differentiating between SUV, economy, hybrid, uh, when they've purchased a car, uh, perhaps the price range of the car owned and what interesting data, you know, that this can reveal, you know, the type of consumer who's buying an SUV versus someone that's buying a hybrid, you know, already you can start to see some of the possibility here. Yeah. And so like, you know, say, oh, and I guess here's another thing to mention. You don't need to be an Amazon seller to use the DSP. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you can direct tra traffic directly to an Amazon site, or you can actually, um, outlink to, uh, to, to another website. So if you're a mechanic, your, your own website. Yeah. If you're a mechanic, mm -hmm. um, you can, you know, get into the Amazon DSP and start advertising your brick and mortar, but be tapping into this audience type for people who like own a car within a certain price range or a certain make and model. And how does Amazon get this data? Um, one, I believe they do use a, a third party, um, data partnership, but number two, um, Amazon has an Am has Amazon garage, um, which is like, if you're ordering car parts, you can add your car to your Amazon garage and we'll filter out the parts for, to only fit the year, make and model. Mm -hmm. um, so I've done this with my cars in the past. If I'm looking for spark plugs or whatever, and it will only show parts that are exactly uh, that are that match or that fit my vehicle. Yep. So Amazon has all that data. And, and this is the thing that we're seeing is that Amazon. Hey, did you know this, Mike? Sorry. sorry Give it to me. Amazon. I don't know if they if the deal's finalized, but I think they bought out AMC. The TL, the television network. AMC? No, the movie theater. Oh, that's what I meant. AMC theaters. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think the idea, and I think it's like the same thing that they do with Whole Foods 
where it's like they buy out a brick and mortar and then they make it better by tying it to like your Amazon Prime account, yep. by doing Amazon Fresh. And I think this is their thought in order to compete with Netflix, uh, they'll release like Amazon original videos first in theaters only. And if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can go see the movie in theaters for either free or for like a super discount. Yo, you know what would be really sick? If huh. you're like, oh, I'm going to the movies tonight. Let me buy something on Amazon. And it's just there. Like they'll have like certain inventory at Dude. the movie theaters. Yeah. I mean, th- clearly this is th- the the mission of Amazon is, is global domination, right? <laughs> but they want to be in, they want to be in every niche. Right. Um, and so anyways, because they have their fingers in so many pies or however the expression goes, like th- that they have a much bigger audience targeting Mm -hmm. data at their fingertips that's where they have like automotive right um data i I just had a conversation with someone they spend something like two hundred fifty thousand dollars a month uh doing solar lead generation so like you know that's a really huge market uh and they were they like tapped out of facebook ads and they're like all right now we're ready to continue our domination you know we have google ads we have facebook ads we need to tap into uh, Amazon ads because it's going to allow us additional targeting types that we don't have access right. to previously. And, right. you know, we haven't gotten to this yet. If you're, if you're sitting there wondering like, well, what, you know, they're, they're going to be like double targeting people. It's like, not necessarily you have custom audiences, which we'll get to in a second. They can actually, you know, target specifically either retargeting or, or, or new, which we'll get to in a second. Yeah. And one, one thing to add on that just before we forget, cause it's not in the show notes you can add negative audiences yes. to all of these items. So if you have another audience that you're targeting with one campaign, you can make that as a negative to another so that you're not, uh, you know, kind of like the RPS, kind of like the RPSB thing. We don't want keyword cannibalization. You don't want audience yep. uh, cannibalization. Right. So everyone who clicked on a Facebook ad will not see your Amazon DSP because you can tag them. Yep. Up next, we have demographics. Pretty straightforward. Gender, age. There's age buckets that people go into. It's not every individual age. Um, pretty straightforward there. And next up, we have devices. So you can target people if you know they're mobile, if they're using a cell phone. You can differentiate between iPhone or Android. You can differentiate between you know if someone's connecting for, using a 3G network, 4G, or a Wi-Fi. You know, and all the stuff you can see in Audience Insights. You can see if there's any performance difference. I would doubt you would see a performance difference between oh, 4G conversion rates for 4G users is way higher than Wi-Fi users. But you know, it's they're just they're basically just giving all the data they have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that comes really handy if, uh, you know, you're advertising an app and it's a very big app that, you know, people aren't going to want to download over uh, mobile data. Mm-hmm. And instead, you're going to wait until they're on Wi-Fi. To oh, do yeah, something that makes like sense. That. Um, another thing, too, like how about the purchasing and consumer behavior between an iPhone user and an Android user? Like there's so many weird nuances between what uh, an iPhone person or an Android, if you were selling a certain product, you just know that like somebody that buys an iPhone is, is a very different person than buys an Android phone. This is the world we're living in. Yeah. Well, also, I mean, if, if you're selling, say, iPhone cases or iPhone charger yeah. or something or like, you know, those solar powered cases. Um, yeah. You, like, obviously, you're going to want to limit your audience to iPhone. Um, I, so like you can just see how that like if you sell products for iPhone, um um, like if you're running a sponsor display uh, within Seller Central, you can't really negative audience Android users. Yep. Um, so yeah, so that's where the manual targeting kind of comes in handy. Uh, next up, we have browsers. So you can also target people based on whether they're shopping with Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Internet Explorer, etc. cetera. Um, again, I don't know if there would be a massive performance difference there, but I know that the people who use Internet Explorer are of an older generation, so... <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty certain that's that's true. Yeah, uh, a lot of that would come into play, perhaps, with uh, if someone is selling some kind of technology, like an app or something, and they want to go after yeah. certain people. By the uh, way, fun like, fun fact: the DSP. By the way, everyone always calls it everyone in, in who is part of the Amazon DSP. It's it's the Amazon DSP. Just so you guys know, it's, it's like a, I don't know. It seems very culty whenever you're talking with Amazon reps. They're always like, "Oh, the DSP," um, so but it o- it only I, works on cr- Firefox. It only works on Firefox. It does well in Firefox. Uh, Stephen's correct. Just ladies and gentlemen, Stephen's corrected me probably 14 times before recording. Uh, he's like, Mike, it's the DSP. You're you're in you, the, got, you got to drink the you're cool in, man. That's right. Uh, up next, you can target uh, based off their operating system. Again, similar reasons, Mac, Android, Linux, Windows, so on and so forth. Rounding it out, we have education, high school, college, graduate, 
uh, bachelor's that was in there too. So you can do different types of education targeting too. Yeah, so so those are all like the pre-built audiences in uh, Amazon's targeting segments. Right. But they they've also, done the hard work for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, they've just kind of collected that. But then they do have some additional options for you to create custom audiences. Um, these are based, you can create these based off of um, actual ASINs um, on Amazon. So you can grab an ASIN on Amazon. It doesn't even have to be your own ASIN. That's the cool thing. It's So with sponsored display, again, um, there is an option like retargeting people who've purchased your product before. Yep. Um, but you can't retarget someone who purchased a competitor's product before. Um, but now you can. So you can grab your ASIN. You can grab a competitor's ASIN. You can group a bunch of ASINs. Um, so you can take like all of your competitors, group them into one, and then you can target based off of someone who viewed this item before, who's purchased this item before, or someone who has um, you know, viewed this or similar items. So kind of you can see there like the, the really apparent strategies that are popping up is you can retarget people who viewed your product but did not purchase your product in the last 30 days. You would add that as a, as a negative audience. Um, and so that's one of the problems, again, with sponsored display is you can target people based off their product views. But if someone purchased something, you're kind of wasting those impressions to retarget someone who, who bought and is no longer in the market. So with the manual targeting, you can negate the people who did make a purchase. Um, you can also retarget people who viewed your competitor's product but did not purchase it. How about that? In the last 30 days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if you have a consumable, you can retarget people who purchased your product or a competitor's product um, 60 days ago, but not within the last 30 days. Yep. Um, so you know like their supply is running short. Um, yeah, anything else you want to add to that, Mike? Yeah, that sort of, what's really cool about that is, you know, when I used to do a lot of Facebook ads, we would set up that exact thing and you would do it with retargeting pixels. Like you'd know when a checkout would occur based off a product and then you would go and do it. And like, that was like groundbreaking uh, to be able to set up those consumable type retargeting. It's basically like delayed retargeting. It's like, well, they bought it 30 days ago. It's now 31 days. We know that they've used it all up because it's a 30 day supply. Now we can serve them an ad. And that was awesome. Now you can do it with competitor products. Insane. So yeah. anyone selling a consumable, this should really be on your radar, which is really neat. Yeah, so these are audiences. So so one final thing to add on this note is these are audiences based on Amazon users. Um, so you can target products in the ways that we just said. You can also target specifically off of Amazon Prime Video if you find that particularly relevant. Um, so you can target people based off of a specific movie or a specific genre or a specific actor. So you can get down to that granularity. Or if you have your own audience, if you have your own hashed audience or pixel traffic from your website, um, you can upload those audiences, that, that data as well, um, and continue to, to, to use that. So, yep. And, you know, this is sort of targeting, uh, dimension targeting. Uh, you can also target by time of day as well. Uh, you get every single hour and every single day available to you. And just in case you're keeping track, 7 times 24 is 168 hours through out the week so you get to go ahead and target whatever you want multiplied by 168 hours because you can bid differently for all of them and that's really interesting because amazon does not have that for their regular advertising console um but for some reason on the dsp you can do that day party so you can set a, yeah yeah you can set a schedule um and they even have hourly reporting data which they don't have on amazon now to be fair that the reporting data is only stored for up to 24 hours um but at any point, you can look at the last, you know, 24 hours and you can see the impression traffic, the spend, the click-through rate. Um, so mm -hmm. you can, you know, optimize from there and, uh, you know, implement some day parting if you want to. Yep. Moving into our last sort of area, it's contextual targeting. Um, this is basically, you know, going out there. And a good example of this is I can target people who are reading a gaming blog looking at a gaming website, but maybe they're not gamers themselves. Um, so previously when we were talking about some of those demographic type sort of interest groups or in market audiences, those are people that are have done have done things to land there. And then over here we're talking about people that have are currently doing things, but perhaps have not been, you know, tagged as a gamer, if that makes sense. Did, was that clear, Stephen? Yeah, yeah. Um 
And the way that they are able to do this is through uh, a marketing company called IAB. I forget what the company's called, but it's basically a, a digital marketing company. And they've, you know, they, they've got a web scraper tool that's basically scraped the entire internet and has categorized or at least defined to the content of every web page. Um, and so Amazon's using this data, this IAB content, to basically give you the option to not just target the audiences based off of, you know, their demographics or lifestyle, whatever. So you, you don't just have to target the audiences, but you can also target the context or basically you can think of it as where the ad is being displayed. Um, so, you know, if we say anywhere off Amazon on the advertising network, that's pretty broad. Um, and if you're selling like a, like a health pill supplement and you're targeting, you know, people that are of a certain age group that are your demographic that are interested in health and nutrition, you can refine that even further by limiting that to specific pages, such as um, women's health and nutrition, or people who are looking specifically at health and fitness related content. And it just makes it that much more, hopefully, uh, you know, a, a clickable um, to people if they're on the website, because they're, even if the person is in your demographic and they would be normally interested in that product, if they're, you know, looking up surfing or something else, they're watching surfing videos. And now here's a product that like, you know, they would normally be interested in, but they're not thinking about diet right now. Um, that would be, um, yeah, just kind of one more way to just get your audience targeting really refined. A couple more examples of just this IAB content, um, how you can refine it. You know, they've got personal finance, shopping, travel, hobbies, interests, health and fitness. All of those are major categories. If you expand those menus, they have even smaller, more granular levels. Um, so yeah, I mean, under like the health fitness, it gets down to men's health, women's health, nutrition, exercise, fitness, vitamins, supplements, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And we just covered a lot of info. Let's jump in to the summary section and the big takeaways. Alrighty, Steven, we covered the gamut. It's very likely that a lot of the a lot of people that are listening to this, this is their first time really being exposed to, I mean, being able to target people that viewed a competitor product but didn't purchase, that's huge. So we just entered a new sort of tier of Amazon advertising. And this is the thing that, you know, I don't know if it was clear or not, but all of those things that we mentioned, those were only the top level categories. Like you can drill down, just like you mentioned in the contextual targeting, you can drill down to any of those sort of parent topics that we talked about. You can drill down to super granularity and you can get so creative with how you are targeting that uh, the, the possibilities really are as beyond what you could even imagine. Um, just think about, you know, really high powered advertisers, what they can do if they have Facebook ads, Google ads, and Amazon DSP all acting together, uh, and really just building really strong strategies. Um, because you can filter positively, like actively target them. You can target negatively. Don't target these people. Uh, for all of those topics and all of them drill down even even further. So you can get so refined, which is really exciting. Yeah, and Amazon does have a ton of data just to take advantage of. Um, so it is really cool to kind of tap into that because they are a data behemoth. So yeah, it's really fascinating to just be able to yeah get access to that. And real quick, I guess it, it might be helpful to add, in case if anyone's wondering what do these ads look like, um, you can create your own custom ad. Um, you know, if you have a art team or, or a design team or you outsource it, um, and if you want to get creative with it, so you can create your own ad or you can just use Amazon. They call it dynamic e-commerce, which means you just add your ASIN and Amazon will generate an ad that looks pretty similar to an Amazon listing. You know, it's got the review, it's got the price, it's got the add to cart button or shop now button. Uh, and those typically have really good click through rates because, yep. um, people are familiar with Amazon. So it doesn't even seem you know, intrusive of an ad, you know, because it's, it's an Amazon listing, right? People hate pop-ups that it's like, this person lost 60 pounds in four days, you know, like mm -hmm. people are used to those kinds of ads and pop-ups, but this is just like a, Hey, here's a product, great price, great reviews ad. Now I happen to be interested in this. I happen to be this lifestyle looking at this webpage related to this content. This ad seems very relevant. So click through rates are, are pretty high. Easy way to get better click through rates on your Facebook ads, stick an Amazon logo in it. And people are just mm. like, oh, like, yeah, I'll buy this from Amazon. Right. And here's one of my biggest takeaways for everyone listening to this. Expand your advertising paid traffic mind. 
you know, I think if you've only ever advertised on Amazon PPC, you have been given uh, a bit of an easy pass in the sense of Amazon sponsored products, sponsored brand ads, so on and so forth, are perhaps the best ads on the internet in terms of conversion rate for e-commerce. There's no doubt. Like nobody has a Shopify store running Google search text ad traffic with consistent 10% conversion rates. It just to cold traffic. It just doesn't exist outside of the world of Amazon. So Amazon has done a huge amount of work to build this ecosystem that makes it easy for you to have built in brand rec- like trust of people buying things online. Right. So that's awesome. And if you are an Amazon marketer or a brand owner and you've only been advertising on Amazon and you haven't done top of funnel stuff and, you know, top of funnel stuff is truly before the person's even searching for it. The best advertisers and the best marketers that I know have mastered top of funnel because top of funnel is harder than bottom of funnel. It is, more, you have to be more creative. What ad are you going to serve somebody who doesn't even know that they want your product yet? Right. How are you going to bring them into your brand? How are you going to move them down the funnel? This is your chance to really ascend to what I think are much higher heights. Uh, so you need to be a really skilled marketer to make, take someone who's completely cold, never heard of your product, and bring them in through your funnel to get them to eventually convert on by actually purchasing the thing. And this should get you super amped up because this is, you know, this is the big time. Right. So to speak. That's it. Top of funnel, full funnel marketing. Yeah. Well, we hope this episode was helpful to you guys. Um, We recognize not everybody is using um, DSP, but we wanted to at least make you aware of it uh, just so that, you know, if it ever crosses your mind, um, you know what it is, you have a better understanding of it. Um, I think a lot of people are just wondering, like, what the heck is the Amazon DSP? So we want to clue you guys in. Uh, if this is something that you have been thinking about bringing your business into this, um, yeah, we just hope that, we, you know, we're giving you some some more ideas of kind of how to strategize and what to expect. Have a good one, everybody. 